Hello, welcome to Anson Griffiths Occasional Series of YouTube Tutorials in MATLAB. Uh, today we're featuring the Topo Toolbox, the Topography Toolbox, and just to say the intellectual property belongs to Chad A. Green. So just to say there, there's Chad Green, and that's it. The intellectual property of his, I took one of the help files and I amended it ever so slightly, but just to get that out of the way so you can download it from the matlab central file exchange there it is 70338 so we can get rid of that one uh, there's the topo uh, toolbox and wordpress just a slight introduction there and you can read that at leisure so i can get rid of, get rid of that uh, there's another one, just the references from the Topo Toolbox, just to read that there at your guide. There is a PDF that I found from uh, Colorado University, and this is incredibly similar to what I've done. So that's just a PDF of it if you want to look at that. And there is a paper by... Um, that Chad and his co-workers, or I should say co-coders, uh, wrote. And there's a paper on Earth Surface Dynamics. So, And that's from a core um, academic in UK. So I took all of that toolbox and I have it here now as a live script. And I... I'm not familiar with everything, it's just to give uh, the viewers a guide as to what's going on. So, the Topo Toolbox version 2 is much better than Topo Toolbox version 1. I would just leave it at that. So, there we are. So, we're going to read in the GeoTIFF. If you're just completely new, we have to use um, a 3D to 2D WGS84. So, there's the link to there. Uh, projected coordinate system is from there and the Esri grid is there so if we just go down a little bit here so we're going to read in a geo tiff and we're going to convert that into a digital elevation model there you can see there how big it is and all the attributes of that uh, when I highlighted it there you saw these but there are the properties again step 3 I'm going to leave alone you've just taken a, the 1x5 one 1x5 five, one five, just to show you get the values pop out there are all the methods you have a grid object and there's all the methods that Chad wrote there. And some of them I'm familiar with, others don't know. So you just have to look it up yourself. There we're going to see a scale model of the, uh, sorry, I should say scale colors of the digital elevation. There we are. I suppose you could say there should be a title, etc., and there should be an X label and a Y label, but we move on. Now, one of the methods is gradient 8. So you're looking at the steepest gradient aspect, an 8 connected neighborhood. So I assume you know, there's 4 connected and 8 connected. And I have a little uh, YouTube tutorial about 4 connected and 8 connected and what that means there. So there's the steepest descent. Uh, so there we are just down here we're going to get a surf of it and we get a three-dimensional representation of the digital elevation model and you 
you can turn that and twirl it any way you want uh, just by using the mouse just turn it there that's the nice thing of the live script you can play with the three-dimensional representation you can now get some attributes of the uh, topography there you know curvature roughness etc i didn't do it i'm only taking the the sample file you can write the file you can write it as a text file or a tiff there using those commands there um, now we're going to fill the sinks and i think if you don't know what fill sinks is i think i put in a obviously i didn't but you can use the fill sinks command to just remove those little local depressions and now we can get the flow direction here so just in case i went a little bit too quickly there yeah so there you are the flow direction local sinks and that's with the fill sinks command now you can get the flow direction using the commands on lines 14 to 18 that's there here are some methods associated with flow object you just type the command at the command prompt methods of the object that you created Uh, now we're going to get the drainage basin if you don't know what a drainage basin is if you just hover over there you can look up wikipedia and then we can if i get my mouse to work we can see the drainage basins down here uh, and down here this is quite region props this is quite difficult to, to, if you're new to it i have done my own youtube video on region props uh that's a bit of a mouthful to the look up but if you look up anselm griffin um region props you'll get it in youtube where i explain in detail how the rain drain the region props work sorry for that misspeak and then we end there so run through a for loop uh, with a with an if inside it and there we have the labels just there so we had the labels just go back there um, I had the labels so sorry uh, uh, there we are with the color bar and then we do greater than if the stats dot run that's from up there somewhere is greater than a million you know you get the text out and finally 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 uh, the distance from each drainage basin there's an, um, the frequency distribution of flow distances and so if I, and here we have the flow accumulation using stream object uh, and we're getting it a minimum drainage of 10,000 cells and that's there again given out to myself there should be a title on that graph at the very least 
and there are the methods for stream object and there's the largest sub network of the channel network and finally the flow distance and then you can write uh, the shape right you can write it write it to file uh, using shape right there okay now <laughs> that's only a vague idea of what can be done with the topo toolbox uh, courtesy of chad a green and really it wasn't so much of the nitty gritty it was just to give you an idea of what could what could be done thanks very much for listening